Live with Lash is taped before a virtual audience. It's your girl and you're live with Lash. So we're back again for the fourth episode of Live with Lash. And I hope that everyone had an amazing time last week with Priscilla from Love Island, where we got to learn a few, you know, things about Love Island, about her and about content creation. So today's guest, everyone know, everyone who knows me knows what basketball means to me. And it's mental health awareness week as well. So I decided that this week's guest should be people involved in something that you know, health like a stress reliever, all of that. So let's get to meet today's guests. Promise and Antonia are professional basketball players that can both D you up and put the ball in the basket. In the 2014-15 season, Promise reached the NCAA Sweet 16 with Arizona State. In the 2015 WNBA draft, Promise was selected by the Phoenix Mercury. Promise's professional career has seen stops in Spain, Germany, and Romania. Atonia is an American-born Nigerian basketball player for the Nigerian national team. Atonia played college ball as a UCLA Bruin before making the decision to play overseas professionally for Mali and Senegal. In 2019, Promise and Atanya won the gold medal with Nigeria in the African Championship. Hi. Hi. Um, just so everyone can Hi. Promise. Oh, sorry, that's a bit slow. Just so everyone knows who everyone is now. Could you just wave? Actually, the name is there. Yeah. So that's yeah. Promise and that's Atonia. And they're professional basketball players like everyone already saw. So let's get to find out about what got them into basketball when they started and just everything. And yeah, I see that they are very beautiful as well. <laughs> so um, when do you guys start playing? Start playing? Um, I'll start. Um, I started playing basketball around 12 years old. Um, I started in sixth grade. Um, and I only started because uh, my older sister and brother played basketball. So I decided I wanted to play sport as well. Uh, that's nice. Um, Atonia? I cannot hear. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try putting my headphones in. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but I cannot hear you guys. So Hey, can you hear me, Tanya? Okay, okay, wait. I'll just ask Can you hear me? Somebody, okay? Hello. Yes. Okay, now I can hear you. Okay, you can hear me. Can you hear Lash? Can you say Hello. Hello. No. Okay. No worries. And this is the reason why we do a live show because live shows are awesome. <laughs> so this is what we're gonna do. Thank you to our virtual studio audience for bearing with us for just one quick moment while we get our technical issues adjusted. Atonia, we're gonna ask you to please log off and log right back in, and then we're gonna pick up as if it was a live show. So while she's doing that, what we're gonna do, Lash, is we're gonna go back. And virtual audience, again, thank you guys for being so patient with us during our live show. This is why we do these, because we love you and we want you to see the behind the scenes. And that's why you like 
live with Lash. So you can see behind the scenes. So we're going to do this one more time. We're going to bring her in. Lash, can you say something? Hello. Hello? Can you hear me now? Gosh, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, Sylvia says it's that whole white <laughs> life. No, no. <laughs> uh, so again, if you haven't already, we still want you to like today's episode and to share it with your friends so that they can come in and watch the show live as well and learn about these wonderful young ladies. And we're going to try one more time. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Hi, guys. Hopefully it works. Can you hear me now? Hello? <laughs> yes. Okay. I can hear you. Can everybody can you hear last? I can hear you now, but now I can't hear. Um, I can't hear him. Uh, you can't hear me. Wait, no. I can read oh, list, but I can't. <laughs> You don't need to hear me. But Lash, say something one more time. Hi. Yeah, so I can hear you just fine, but I cannot more. hear him. That's fine. Promise. Can you say something to make sure she can hear you as well. Hello. Hi, Tonya. Yeah. Promise. I can hear you too. Okay. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna go back. We're gonna play the. Um, no, we're we're good. We're gonna start from the um, Atonye and asking her about her career. Ready? Yeah. All right. And yes. Let's get it. Okay. So we okay. asked Promise two seconds ago before we went off. We asked her what age is in. So now we're asking you, Atonia, when did you start playing and how did you start playing, basically? Yeah, so I started playing basketball around um, five years old at the YMCA. They have like a small junior league. Um, it wasn't much, but it was just us kids running back and forth from what I can recall. And I got started there. And um, from there, my parents put me in extensive training, different club teams, um, different little league teams. And I was just... I took flight from there. <laughs> Ooh, at five. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, that, that, just, that sounds like talent. Okay, so we're going to also ask now, like, you started playing for fun pretty much initially in your earlier days. So how did the transition go from you playing for fun into you being professional? Like, did you get scouted or...? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so... I had an older sister that played, so it was just naturally that the younger siblings followed, like you said, for fun. Um, I was always tall as a kid, um, so it wasn't until high school that I knew that I was, you know, probably above average. Before, I just thought I was good, but when you got into high school with better level of players, then you know that where you kind of resonate on the scale. Um, when I got into high school, I, my parents realized that I was above average, and good enough to probably play division one basketball. And from there, um, I got, I went into even more training, more personal training, um, higher end club teams. Um, and I just built my resume and my career from um, top high school coaches, connecting with them, other top players, and really traveling around the US playing in local tournaments, um, just trying to better my overall game. Yeah, that sounds amazing. But I think what stood out for me there is you had yourself and then you had your sister and you had your family as well and your parents as well. Just like investing in your in your talents, which I think that a lot mm -hmm. of people probably don't get, but that sounds very inspiring. Um, promise, how did it change for you from being for fun to being professional? Yeah, so similar to um what Tony said, um, you know, growing up I've seen my brother and sisters play, so I decided to play and then um, in middle school, which is to seventh and eighth grade, um, I was uh, approached by a coach that had a, a travel team. Um, it's a club team, so you it's a group of girls that play on a team and you travel and play different uh, other teams around the um, world or I mean around the United States or you know or your local state and um, I, uh, so I got, I was approached by her and then, so she just molded me into the player I am today. Um, you know, she trained me, uh, I was training for like, uh, seven days a week. Um, 
she developed my skills and stuff. And then by high school time, um, I, I was, so my freshman year, I was on varsity and um, that's when I started getting looks from different colleges. And once I see my brother go on to college and I knew that you could get a scholarship by playing the sport you're in, um, I decided to, um, that, that allowed me to, you know, push myself more, even harder to um, get a scholarship for my, uh, for my family because I knew my mom and dad we have they have six kids and i knew like it was going to be difficult to get all of us through college so um to make it easier on them um i uh, so i i i yeah uh, sorry i uh, was i i got a scholarship <laughs> to go to arizona state and then i played there four years and then i um like like you guys said um was drafted to the WNBA and then when overseas. Yeah. Okay. I feel like both stories are very inspiring in their own way. Like having the support, having the, what's it called? Like dedication. Cause you said like you train seven times a week and I'm sure at 20 years old, tra train quite a couple of times early morning. It just shows yeah. that with hard work and dedication and commitment, you can do what you want to do. And I feel like what I also learned from that, that I, I'm taking away from this and a lot of people should as well is that you don't need to sit back and wait for people to make a way for you. You should pretty much take the initiative and make a way for yourself. Yeah. So um, what has been like your biggest hindrance or like a biggest challenge in both careers? Let's start with promise this time. Um, like playing overseas, like my challenge overseas or like, like being in professional or like growing up playing basketball. In being, being professional in, in being professional in basketball in general. Okay, so a uh, biggest challenge was it's just like the sacrifices and like um you know you got you gotta really sacrifice like not being able to be here in the summer, uh, be where you live in the summer, um to be with your the team that you wanna um for instance our national team, we're always training in the summer, so I have to sacrifice my summers um, to train with my national team or like being overseas, you know, you're far away from your family. Um, it's, it's, it gets hard, um, you know, having to stay in contact through the phone, you know, every day and you're on total different yeah. sides of the world. So like the time difference is, is a huge, takes a huge part in that. So um, I think those are the two, like the two, just, just sacrificing your time and, and um yeah yeah um Atonia, what's yours? um mine would have to be what one of them would be what promise said which is being away from your family um my birthday is during the season so i haven't celebrated my birthday with my family in over six years um which kind of sucks but you know you kind of just get used to the isolation um, hopefully you're in a good team on a good team with nice players where it's like it becomes like family to you. But being away from family is always gonna be the hardest for any player. And then my um, yeah. one of my second biggest challenges in basketball was I tore both of my ACLs. Um I know Promise can attest to the same thing, but um going through a big injury where you have to sit out for a whole year um and wanting to come back but your body's not ready, it takes a mental toll on a lot of athletes. Um a lot and a lot of athletes go through depression or they go through this stage where they're not understanding why can't they be what they once were you know and so i think having those two injuries um was the biggest challenge but also the biggest growth in my career because had i not had them i wouldn't have grown and developed um into the player i am so i just think it gave me a sense of like maturity to have to deal with such a hardship yeah Definitely hard work pays off and sometimes you find yourself in certain situations that you just need to, you know, push through to end up being like that. <laughs> so yeah. I'm also going to ask, like, what has been your personal, your greatest personal achievement? Let's start with, in basketball, so let's start with Atonia this time. Um, 
I wouldn't say, okay, so my biggest achievement in basketball, I wouldn't say it's like a specific game, even though um, like the Afro bat, the, my first, my winning the first Afro basket was a great highlight. Like I've had a lot of the highlights, like, you know, uh, being on top teams or being um, first division player, the week, things like that. But I think my greatest attribute is that I am financially stable enough to provide and help my family. And I think that's something that my family is proud of, and I'm very fortunate um, to be able to do at a young age. Um, so I think that's my biggest blessing and contributes to like my overall purpose in life is just to try to give back. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, promise, what's your greatest achievement? Yeah, I know. So what Atonia said, I really never thought about that, but I think that's one of them, um, you know, being, being able to help my family um, and just doing what I love to do and getting paid for it. It doesn't seem like I'm working. So it's, that's, oh, that's one of my um, greatest achievement, but also um, getting drafted to the WNBA. Um, that was like huge to me because I really, didn't think I was going to get drafted. Like there was a lot of girls coming out my year that were good. So just to hear my name getting called, um, that was a huge, huge achievement for me. What was your first, when that happened, what was your first reaction? Did you cry, you scream, you laugh? What did you do? <laughs> so I was watching it and um, I was just like, I was in total shock because I was the last name called and usually when you're the last person you called your miss mr it so in football yeah. is called american football is called um when you're the last person getting drafted it's called mr Irrel irrelevant so um i was mrs irrelevant for that <laughs> year <laughs> but i didn't care because i was like i i got drafted and my name was called so it yeah. I, I was just so happy <laughs> yeah <laughs> um we're gonna get a bit touchy now. Like, you think, mm, hey, let me just go straight to it, yeah. So, <laughs> basketball a lot of times is perceived as a male dominated sport. So, like, do you think you suffered from that or has that played a role at all in your career? Or do you think that you'd be somewhere else if you were a guy? Atonia, you could go. Stop it. I mean, I would say Stop. hands down, I would be making more money. <laughs> that I mean, if you think about the level of play that we are at, if you think about, I mean, just for me, a UCLA men's basketball player, they like Russell Westbrook, Kevin Love. Like, if if we matched our careers and I was just on the male side, then I would hands down um, be getting paid, not even double, but probably triple what I'm making. Um, for, so that's one. And I think, um, you know, sometimes it is hard for on the women's side to get that rec recognition um, that the male side gets um, yeah. and that support that the male side gets. But, you know, hopefully I know for the U.S. they have taken a, several steps to make um, our women's league here, the, the WNBA, a little bit more equivalent. But I remember coming into my first year and our, the women's um, salary cap was measured overseas to the male second division. You know, not it, we were nowhere on the same scale as the men's first division, but we were compared to the men's second division. And that's how unequal um, men and women's basketball is. So financially, um, there's no comparison. And then um, just, yeah. It, 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 it's tough knowing that we put in the same amount of work. You you practice yeah. five to six days a week, so do I. But <laughs> unfortunately, and there's a lot of women's teams that have a big fan base, but we don't get the same endorsements and support and boosters that the male side gets. So it's it's unfortunate, but, you know, we've learned to just live with it and keep pushing for better, better uh, accommodations and things like that. But hopefully it gets yeah. better in the future. Yeah. Definitely what Tony said, like, the pay is just so different. Like, like he said, like she said, um, the second division team in, on the men's side is getting as much as we're getting it on the, in, in the first division team, yeah. uh, in the league. So, yeah, it's just, 
it's not fair, but like Antonio said, probably their revenue. Um, they have more, more fans, yeah. probably. But in, I, but in France, like the fans are always, it's always sold out. It's always, it's a, a huge yeah. atmosphere. So like, I Amy mean, and the paint is great, but it's not to the level of the men. So, yeah. yeah. There's a lot more you can do with like, equal pay, like take care of your family after you go on trips, all of that. What? Well, <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine getting the same pay as the men's side? Oh my gosh. I would be playing till I'm 40. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you could probably fun. retire in like five, anything. 10 years. Yeah. True. True. You can actually start a foundation. Anything. But that yeah. being said, though, do you think? Anything that you can do, anyone can actually do to like kind of sort that out, or do you just sit back and watch? Like, is there any? Is there anything like? Can we actually fight for it? There's no hope. Just be honest. Uh, at the given time with the coronavirus, probably not, because everybody <laughs> is taking a financial hit, which is it's just no. Yeah. You, it's going to be hard to fight for a higher pay when everybody around the world is taking a financial hit except for pharmaceutical companies and um, anything relevant to the virus, you know? So mm -hmm. right now, probably not, but in the future I do for my contracts, I do try to stay very firm on my pay. Um, a lot of clubs will try to low cut you. And I don't know if it's like that on the men's side too, but I just know, you know, you can't play for pennies at the end of the day. So <laughs> I, try to, I try to stay as firm as I can for my rate because I believe in myself and my talents. And for a lot of women out there, you, you need to do the same with on any um, employment platform. You believe in yourself enough that, you know, God will see, see you through to the level of salary that you deserve. Yes, sis. <laughs> and just for you now, taking it one step deeper, oh, sports in Nigeria is not really, mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think about female sports in Nigeria, especially basketball? Like, Nigeria already doesn't care about sports that much, and then you're a female in sports, in a male-dominated mm -hmm. sport. So, like, mm -hmm. what's the experience there? Because I can't even imagine how it would be. I think, so, probably um, before their perspective on women's sports in Nigeria um, was a little different, but I, I feel like the success we have with have with the national team, it's gotten so with the success of the national team, I feel like the perspective of um women's sports, not only in basketball, um, is getting better. Like I I just feel like they're respecting our craft more and I feel like they're taking us more seriously. Um we're going to the Olympics and now every all the Nigerians and I, like Yes, go. Like, so it's just like, you know, we prove to them and show showcase to them that, you know, we're, we're, we do matter and not only the men's side. Um, so, yeah, I feel like it's growing. It's getting better. It's getting better, definitely. Fair enough, then. It's not there yet, but at least we get to invest now. That's the step. Yes, yeah. So let's now, like, try and get to know you guys on a more personal level. So we're going to go into life outside basketball. <clears throat> and there's a small package that will be coming up in a few seconds. Now Millie, rock pick it up. Now Millie, rock pick it up. Now Kodak, black pick it up. Now Kodak, black pick it up. Now hit them, folks pick it up. Now hit them, folks pick it up. Now shirt up. Here's your chance. I say left cheek, right cheek, drop it low, then swing. Text us up in this thing, put you up on this game. I be parking my frame. Gang, 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 gang. If you don't jump to put jeans on, baby, you don't feel my pain. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fun doing quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, how's it been, though? Like, not being able to play sports. Like, what have you actually been up to besides TikTok? <laughs> Promise. Oh, okay. So, um, <laughs> I've actually, so my brother has a gym. So like I've been, um, work, I still have been working out and like running and stuff. So I've been training and then also, um, just 
so being around my brother um these these past months now um he's really opened my eyes up to like business uh business side of things so like you know investing in houses and stuff yeah. like that um so I've been really doing that, um, just learning business stuff and um, and just hanging out with my family. You know, I haven't been able to do that in a long time because summer has been usually my my summer has been usually took taken up with um, the Nigerian national team. So mm -hmm. to be able to be home, it's been awesome. Tanya. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. <laughs> um, how you gonna do this? Okay. Yeah, try now. <laughs> okay. Do you want to just try going back off and come back on one more time? <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, though, Promise, what did you study like in uni or in high school? What uh, you com actually? communications? Have you used that like besides besides basketball? Like, have you been using that? No, I haven't. But um, I actually, I actually want to start um doing stuff like that. So like, I want to be in like PR stuff. Um, so and then so my brother has a lot of connects on that. So mm -hmm. I've been talking talking to him about that. Y'all get the back. <laughs> get the back. <laughs> okay, can you guys hear me? Yes, you can. Yes. <laughs> was, what have you been getting up to in quarantine? Yeah, so I have been spending a lot of time with my family, um, which I love. And I've also just been trying to compensate and make a secondary income so I've been trading every morning at 6 30 for stocks and um <laughs> you know just trying to keep myself busy because if I don't then I'm sitting here probably eating a lot <laughs> and like I promised I said doing small workouts here and there unfortunately yeah. I don't have a gym <laughs> so I have to like work out a lot outside or in my room and yeah it kind of gets a little tedious or boring but you know I just I definitely have to work out every day or every other day. What I like from what you both said is you're still trying to secure the bank. Yeah, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes everyone definitely. Just, don't you we're not on holiday, like life is still going on. So yeah. let's get a bit into games because we have a few minutes left. So questions please. So how this works is I'm going to ask you guys a question and if it's you. Put one hand up, and if it's the other person, put two hands up. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> one second. Be back in a second. Where is she? That, was, that that was an accident. I actually <laughs> I was trying to see the the comments. <laughs> I hit the button. So what I said was, if we answer. You, you put one hand up, and if the answer is the other person puts your hands up. So, first question oh, oh, okay. Who has committed more fouls in the game? One hand is you. What? I can't. It was you. It's it's you. No way. It's you. <laughs> no. I it's you. Who no. did I ever I'm, even foul? I'm doing drinks in here, so you guys are both be drinking. <laughs> <laughs> first question. Who has better team spirit? <laughs> you see how we both hesitated. <laughs> no, like, no, uh, no, you're not answering. <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, okay, I'll go to the promise. I'll, okay, I'll agree. That's what I'm saying. Next question. <laughs> Who is more likely to spiral out of control when a night out? Basically, who can't handle the liquor? Oh, I don't That's drink. not true. Well, I don't know. No, 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 I don't even drink. Promise. I, oh, I can't hear Promise. Sing it. 
You can't huh? what? You can't hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, it's like a, it's a little off. I can hear. Can you hear her? Yeah. Okay, well then. Yeah, no, no way. I definitely know. Promise. How are you going to say you can handle a I'm going to drink. Exactly. So, so then how you can need it to be put me? one hand up. Oh, <laughs> who is more likely to spiral out of control? You. She said, but then her second question was. Basically, who can't handle the liquor? <laughs> exactly. So then. Yeah, I'm you so you're telling me out of the both of us who can handle liquor the best you i don't drink exactly so she's asking who cannot handle liquor the best Wait, your friend is here tracy allen so let's ask her she's the dude she's the dude right now oh redondo beach isn't that you that's in cali <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Who? Oh, sorry. Next question. He's trying to read this. <laughs> Who is more likely to start a fight during a match? Who is likely to get into a fight? To start a fight. <laughs> It's like you have to answer the question. These it's questions not, are not applicable to us. <laughs> I know, but if you have to answer, we're both peaceful, so I'm just going to blame for it. Next question. Who is more likely to be late to training? Tanya? Be late? Yeah. Uh, I can see myself being late. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you from being like Who is T? Oh, that's T me. That's uh, that's the name I go by. You've been out at T does fight. <laughs> See? I do not fight. Oh wait, only for money. Only for money. Okay, never mind. Okay, um, who is true. more prone to injuries or breaking a bone? I saw you tore your ATL. Yeah, I've tried, I've never. I mean, knock on wood, yeah. never broken a bone. Yes. Yeah, so. Okay. Next question. I've, yeah. What? Who's, we're both good basketball players. <laughs> so, okay. And, and we play different positions, so that would, it's promise I can't hear you. So you're gonna have to translate whatever promise is saying. That <laughs> you're both good basketball players and you play two different positions, so you can't really actually read them. Yes. Okay, yeah. Okay, so let's people have it on here. I don't know if you've been able to actually see the comments, but let's quickly go through fan mail. She's from Redondo Beach. Tracy. Oh, someone asked. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Who's a better shooter? Oh, so do I read the question? No, just answer it. Who's the better oh. shooter? Who's the better shooter? <laughs> I would say myself because I think it's percentage wise. <laughs> oh, percentage wise? I, I'm I just did. Yeah. Oh, I, just, I, I did, you know, percentage life. Oh I don't my think God. a lot, but I don't miss a lot. <laughs> thank you. She said all our smiles. Oh, thank you. Where and... is it? Doing? I'm our national team. Well, my, we're on the same national team, so we both play for the Nigerian national team, and I'm from Los Angeles, California. Okay. How, How do you? Hmm. Um, well, this would be, to begin with, we are both out of school. Um, we have both graduated. And uh, so we're not currently studying anything. But when we did, um, you know, the university gives us a, a really strict, organized schedule. And they block out, you know, two to three hours a day um, in the morning or afternoon and night for tutoring and studies. Okay. Amen. Thank you. Yes, amen. Thank you. Let's just get five more and then wrap up the show. One. Oh, okay. <laughs> two. 
Thank you. Loving this. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes. <laughs> She's going. Oh, thank you. Oh, so, I know. Thank you guys so much. So at this point, you guys should just give just one last thing to everyone watching and wrap up the show. So promise first, final words for Light and Lash. First of all, thank you, uh, Lash, for having us. Uh, I really enjoyed my time. And thanks for all the fans and um, viewers that are watching. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I enjoyed being here with Live with Lash. Thank you to all the fans and people that tuned in to see me in Promise. And hopefully you guys will get to see us soon um, back on the court. All right. Take care and be safe. Thank you so much, Promise and Antonia, for being on Live with Lash. It's actually been an honor to have you guys here. And I know I've already said before, this is actually very important to me as well. I thank you to all the viewers that came today for the fourth episode of Live with Lash. Until next week with another very exciting guest. Hope you guys have an amazing time. Hope you guys have had an amazing time. Stay tuned. Stay safe. Bye. Bye. Bye.